It's crazy, man. It's crazy. As I was going to the airport, it, it was just a great feeling. I had butterflies. Uh, we were all on the bus together, all the St. Pat's kids, and um, it was like three in the morning, so we were all pretty tired. I only got about two hours of sleep. So as we were going there, we were all like reminiscing about grammar school, and um, it, it was just a great feeling of going away for two weeks somewhere we've never been, and just the camaraderie it brought out, it, it was truly amazing. How did that feel about getting rid of you for 12 days? Oh, he loves it, man. He loves it? Yeah. I never said he didn't even come over to say goodbye. The morning of the trip, I was so tired. We had to be at the airport at 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock. But I'd stayed up all night with my friends the night before. We're celebrating me going away. So I was excited, but at the same time, I was tired. And I was, I was, just, I was just glad to be at the airport and get on the plane. At first, my parents weren't too excited about the idea of me going on a 36-hour flight by myself and then spending the week there. <laughs> you feel you overpacked or you worry you don't Probably. have enough? Probably. No, I'm not worried I don't have enough. I would say I overpacked. I definitely overpacked. What's the game plan? You guys are going to pass it up on a trip? You're going to read? What's, I have two books. And my laptop, so I'm good. I was kind of nervous since we were traveling that far on a long trip, but I was also excited to go to Australia. Not too many people could say that. It wasn't really like, oh, we're going to go see the Pope. It was more like, oh, we're going to Australia because it didn't really hit in yet. I'm happy for my son, but I'm going to miss him. That uh, comment right there. Oh, really? <laughs> All right, let's get a rewind going here. My name is Anthony Orr. I'm Justin Estevez. I'm Shawn Sheehan. Ryan Reese. Jack Chang. I'm Nick Hernandez, and I'm really excited to go to Australia. Good. That's good. Did we get a copy of the unedited version? No, this is not just any old trip. This is a chance to see the Pope. Say bye, guys. It was an early flight, so I tried to sleep a lot, um, which I ended up trying to sleep more than I actually slept. I didn't say it. Brian's, Brian's first time on a flight. Good luck. So we got a um, cell phone slash remote slash DVD player slash don't really know what this is. On the flight, we're in this two by five little seat. We couldn't really do anything. We had this TV in front of us and so basically I'm like Monopoly on the TV and a thousand videos to choose from so that's about it and the people next to us. What did you guys got to eat here? Uh, did you get the beef? Because I thought the chicken was kind of... I had the chicken. It was alright. I don't trust beef on a plane. Me neither. Those two are scarfing it down. <laughs> never one for plain food. This trip was the same deal. I hated the plain food. I personally could eat anything, so I didn't mind the food on the plane. They gave you it was like a full five course meal on the plane, so I didn't mind at all. The only thing I can really say was fantastic was the pasta. I don't know that I can make an educated opinion about the food on the plane because I refuse to eat it. <laughs> I mean, it's not, you don't really expect a first class meal, but you kind of hope for more than three breakfasts in one flight. Tell you how long the flight was to uh, Sydney. It felt like a lifetime, honestly. We all, all the St. Pat's kids, we spent time together when we were younger, and we, ha we hadn't really spent time or hung out after grammar school. So it, it was great to, you know, just talk. I, um, my buddy Peter Finnan was sitting next to me on all three flights, so I definitely caught up with him. And uh, we all went around, especially when we got up throughout the plane ride, we all talked about different, you know, uh, situations that we went through in grammar school. And it was just, we, we told jokes, we had a couple of card games, we met other people. It was, it was really, the time went quick, even though it was 26 hours on the, on the airplane. London, we were in the airport, we all sat on the floor, it was nighttime, um, so we couldn't see anything outside of the airport. It was a whole bunch of World Youth Day um, people sitting on the ground in the airport. All the people from the other countries uh, were playing music, were singing, they had all sorts of instruments, and then there was us. <laughs> It was 
you took the long way there, which was didn't make sense to me. We definitely went the wrong way. We we went the long way. We weren't we went from New York to London, London to Hong Kong, Hong Kong to Sydney. Most people would have went New York to California, to Hong Kong to the, uh, Sydney. Every time you look at the thing, which is be like 13 hours left and 10 hours, it'll never end. We decided to take the long route. Might have been like 12 hours or something like that. And I took like Advil, PM, or Tylenol, whatever that thing was, and passed out. It's the best thing ever. Like, I rec recommend it if anyone ever going on a long plane ride. these little like TV screens on the airplane that shows you where the plane is and you would look at it and the plane would not move so you're like are we are we not going anywhere meanwhile it tells you how fast we're how fast we're going so it's like we're going 600 miles per hour but we're not going anywhere on this map Time leading up to the trip, I thought it was just a dream. But once we touched down and walked off the plane into the Sydney, it was just unreal, and I was glad I went. This is just the beginning, guys. We're at the Sydney airport. Say hi, guys. Hi, guys. We're finally here, yeah! It was crazy, actually, once you realize you're in like Australia, it gets pretty crazy. To finally go outside and stand like on Sydney soil was unbelievable. Well, when we landed in Sydney, we were all just so excited because we all smelled pretty bad. We wanted to like take a shower, go to the hotel, relax. But we were all excited, like we were finally there and we're like, yes, we're off a plane and we were excited to go touring and like see everything because they're like, oh, we have this plan for you and this plan for you. So that was exciting. And it was just, I don't know, it was just nice to be somewhere else. Like it was a strange feeling because everything looks similar to like a regular airport, but you're like in a different country and people are walking around with all these weird accents and you're like, oh, okay, I'm somewhere else in the world. So when I got to Australia, I didn't know anything about it except there was surfing and every single animal in Australia is poisonous. That, that's all I knew. So when I got there, everything was a complete experience. The people were nice, they were great. The accents, the accents were awesome. 
I really didn't know what to expect because I knew it was a city. I didn't think we were going to like the middle of Australia where it was just going to be um, like nothing. Obviously, I know that Sid Sydney is a city, um, but I didn't know other than like they have an opera house and the bridge. I wasn't sure what to expect. First thing I'm going to do is show you a beach, head you off to the eastern side of our city. My first impressions of Sydney, it, it, it was amazing because the cleanliness of, of the country, it was just when we got on, especially Bondi Beach, it, it, there was no garbage, everyone took care of themselves, everyone picked up. It was just a great experience, especially, it, and you saw all miles and miles of ocean, and I think everyone should experience that in their life. And this was almost like a cove. And there was cliffs on both sides, and um, it was pretty, pretty crazy to see it like a beach just uh, in that atmosphere. And I remember, I'm like, I have to get back to this place. Like, I have to see Bondi Beach again. I, I can't be here just once. I will come back to this place. All about the beach, everything seemed like it was a uh, beach town, a part. Bondi Beach was my favorite. Uh, I loved the beach. We went, actually went in the water, it was quite warm. Uh, Bondi Beach, especially, it, Nothing compares to that in Manhattan. I hate to say it because I go to school in Manhattan, I love Manhattan, I hang out there all my life. But just that feeling of being halfway around the world and looking out until you know hundreds of miles of ocean and the water being so clean and blue, it was just nothing can beat that. And the cool part about the water was that if you look down, you can see your feet. Coming from New York and the beaches from New York, and if someone told you that they can walk into the ocean and see their feet, you laugh at them because you can't. The water is just dirty. But to go to Sydney and see like the water of the of like the Pacific Ocean and being able to see your feet, it was unbelievable. That's when it like really hits you that you're not in New York anymore. Before I even seen Sydney, I pictured tundra, grass, wild animals. I guess that's really a bad perception of it. And when I get there, it's, I mean, it's not a city city like New York City, what I've seen so often, but I was almost amazed ignorantly to say that there were so many buildings and there wasn't kangaroos hopping everywhere. <laughs> that is still Sydney. One of the foothills of the Blue Mountains is Penrith. So we're physically now in Waverley Council. Uh, and the furthest one, that's a The site he took is, he took us to like a field where we could overlook the skyline and just see like we were literally looking down on the city and and it was it was incredible it was like wow <laughs> i'm gonna get to spend One, a week here this two, is three it's a great city it's unbelievable Okay. This is a very pretty five. Our fives are not this pretty. None of our money's this pretty. They're green. And this one, look at this. Look at the tin with the little plastic thing. And then I got a 50 cent coin, which is awesome. And I'm not using it because that's so cool. Look, and it has like a koala thing and a fish on it. Zoom into that. The backpack is yellow, orange, red, and every fluorescent shade in between. So I refer to it as the Door of the Explorer backpack. And wherever I go, I know I won't be hit by a car because it's neon. So I actually really enjoyed it. I like the colors because it, it was like the theme for Sydney, like World Youth Day. Like you walked around the, the street and like if you, if you walked around New York City with your backpack on, people would laugh at you and be like, Oh, nice backpack you got there. 
the hundreds and thousands of other kids your age are also walking around the city with it. And so you're just, if, so, so you get this sense of everyone's coming together for a purpose here. They gave them to us and told us we weren't allowed to look inside, so obviously we all looked inside. And they had rosary beads, a bandana, which we were, we were a little confused about. We opened it, we were like, what is this supposed to be? Inside we also had food certificates so we could get food to go places and get them for free so we wouldn't have to pay everywhere we went. There was flashlights, there was tin foil blankets, and I have no idea what all this is for. Um, I, I'm thinking, what, is this Survivor or something? Um, <laughs> There's also like credentials and you had to wear that 24-7. Outside of your shirt, you had to wear it. If it was inside your shirt, you got yelled at. And it had like passes to get into the different places every day. By sharing in the mystery of this Eucharist, let your saving love grow within us and grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to be the witnesses of Christ and the Spirit. Sydney differs from New York a lot of ways. In Australia, everybody everybody talks slower, everybody talks nicer. I mean, coming from New York and talking to the people there, they got confused. A lot of them had to tell me to slow down. So we are going on a cruise around the harbor. We're not getting fed, so we're a little upset about that. But besides that, it should be nice. It's a sudden setting, so it should look nice, but we don't, we'll find out now, won't we? They kind of got us all together and we went to this, like, dock. I'm really loving it. Oh, uh, we're doing five, 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 126 from the book of the Wow, we have, awesome. we have almost 20. 20. 20. 20. You just we have like a quarter of that. Uh -huh. We waited and waited for the boats. We, we didn't know what boat was ours, when we were going to get to go on the boat, what time, because the time that they had told us we were leaving was I don't know clearly if it's not the time enough. we were actually going to get to that go. Too small. I'm not sure. We have a lot of people, so I don't know if we fit. Hopefully we do, though. And so we're all standing around and waiting for a boat. We don't know which boat is ours. We're hoping it's like some massive like yacht looking thing, but it wasn't. We didn't really know what to expect because that night, if I remember correctly, we were tired and hungry, but it ended up, I mean, it was tons of fun.
Brian, Brian. Wait till we turn around, and then you're gonna get up there with the mast, okay? Like, I, I did a boat ride in New York City too, and uh, it was just like New York City. You basically go up and down, you see all these landmarks from a different, different view. Like, we, we, we went around the Sydney Opera House a couple of times, and we got some great pictures of that. Um, but when we actually got on the boat, and we actually were out on the water, the harbor was beautiful, the lights all around us, I really enjoyed it. Took the flight today. We got in this morning. Oh, oh wow. wow, you're tired. Wow. Just love it. <laughs> Our hotel is situated at the bottom of a hill. No matter which way we want to go, we have to end up going up. And walking up with the door of the Explorer backpacks and everything that you need to carry, it's it's kind of difficult, especially because you know you have to wait till you get to Barangaroo to eat. But I mean, the journey's worth it, and we learned some pretty cool songs that we sing along the way. We had to make things up too, but it was great. So the walk to Brangaloo was so long. I, I don't even know how long it was, but it was long. But to see, to be in a group of 126 and singing and chanting the whole time was so much fun. Not to mention, as you walk, you'd see other groups from around the world. All you, every, all you saw was flags across the streets. It was great. We all stayed together and we all helped each other out. It, it was great. Everyone had each other's backs. So.